This video is an answer to a viewer's comment who requested tips to improve communication between INTP and ISTJ types. To illustrate those differences, we're going to look at the intuiting and sensing preferences, as well as their interaction styles. If you're new here, my name is Doris. I'm a certified coach with a master's in psychology, and I help smart romantics build meaningful relationships. To help me illustrate INTP and ISTJ differences, I'm going to use the Love Profiles report for these two types. Here we go. This report is for INTP and ISTJ types. There is a little introduction and then we go into the preferred processes. Let me just read the top piece here to make sure we're on the same page. Everyone has access to both sides of the dichotomy and you most likely use both sides depending on the situation and context. However, one side is your inborn preference as noted in your four letter type code. That means that you may be comfortable using it and you're maybe prone to overdo it. INTP and ISTJ obviously have the introversion preferences in common, so both are likely to prefer or appear to have more receptive, contained, intimate, reflective and quiet energy. And then the information processing is different. The ISTJ is a sensing type, meaning they look for, trust and prefer to receive concrete, realistic, practical and experiential information. And they prefer doing things and solving problems in traditional, tried and tested ways. The INTP is an intuiting type, meaning they look for, trust and prefer to receive abstract, imaginative, conceptual and theoretical information and they prefer doing things and solving problems in new and original ways. Continuing on the next page, when the preferred processes are overdone, they can become one-sided. So the two introverts might turn inward to the point of ignoring and avoiding one another. The sensing type can become simplistic or bean counting, and then the intuition can become overly complicated or pie in the sky magic. INTP and ISTJ are both thinking types, so decision making is based on logic and they may appear reasonable, questioning, critical and tough. It's often an indication of not taking things personally, but in a relationship we tend to push each other's buttons, so feelings can still get hurt between two thinking types. Their worldviews or, you know, approach to time is also different. The ISTJ is a judging type, which means they're likely to be systematic, planful, start early, methodical and have a schedule. Probably noticed that I switched the last two points and didn't read them in order. And the INTP is a perceiving type, which means they are more casual, open ended, pressure prompted, spontaneous and go with the flow, i.e. happy to deal with things as they emerge. At a glance, these gray boxes summarize what we've just looked at with the preferred processes. Feel free to pause the video and read them because we'll dive a little deeper into the cognitive processes differences on the next page now. Because here's the thing, your four letter type code is shorthand for a bunch more information underneath. As I say here, your four letter type code is shorthand for eight cognitive processes. First conceptualized by Carl Gustav Jung 100 years ago, they can now be mapped through EEG technology. And if you take a look at my type playlist, you'll find 16 videos about the different flavors these eight functions can come in as well. So you see the progress doesn't stop. But for now, I'm sharing the eight, back to the text, dynamic activities your brain is engaged in to make meaning of the world. The following are the two processes to which people of these type preferences have the most conscious access. Again, feel free to pause the video and read them. But what I want to say about these is that they're the two things your brain does the most. It's taking in information and processing that information and it's making decisions based on that information. And you can see here that even though the INTP and ISTJ are both thinking types, the kind of thinking is different. For INTP, it's introverted and in the first position. And for ISTJ, thinking is extroverted and in the second position. And this all has an impact on their communication styles, which we're going to come to now. Communication happens all the time. It can take many forms. It's about telling others about the information we value and need and asking them what they need. We tend to expect others to communicate the same way we do. So it's important to realize they are not trying to annoy us when they use their own communication styles. For the INTP, the bullet points refer to the preferences of intuiting and thinking, which we've already covered. The narrative description or the paragraph is based on their interaction style. Interaction styles is a theory and an approach 
to understanding type differences by Dr. Linda Behrens. And I'll link some more information about that in the description below. INTP types have a behind the scenes interaction style, which means they may focus more on getting and giving information, explaining, asking and answering questions and neglect providing instructions. They may be more quiet and think before they speak. And when talking with INTPs or better with I people with INTP preferences, I didn't have the space to write that all out, provide background information, reference models and frameworks, allow for reflection time, ask them for input and share your own. Don't rush them towards an answer and don't finish their sentences for them. A lot of thinking is going on behind the scenes. ISTJ types, on the other hand, have a chart the course interaction style, which means they may focus more on time and task, giving structure or direction and neglect nonverbal information. They may be more pensive and also think before they speak. And they like to reference historical information. Again, this past data focus, right? Pause, don't interrupt them, explain details, be systematic and thorough and avoid invading their personal space. So let's pause with the description and take this into the real world. The viewer asked specifically for a non-romantic or business application. They didn't give any particular examples, but I can imagine this shows up in problem solving every day. INTP types love problem solving and ideally it has to be elegant, universal and the best possible solution. Not the quickest, not the cheapest, not the most traditional, which might be the priorities for the ISTJ, but the best solution all round for the larger context. Let's say you're working in an IT team and you're trying to figure out how to best fix bugs in a legacy product that thousands of clients depend on. The product is well established, the company makes lots of money from it, but clients are starting to get annoyed because it's old and clunky. Even your internal team is starting to grumble because they can no longer keep up with all the tickets that are being submitted. The ISTJ type is more likely to want to fix what is there to keep going with the same thing, because remember the first thing their brain does is introverted sensing, which is reviewing, comparing and contrasting the current situation with past or stored data. They automatically draw on lessons from the past and they do all that with the aim to provide stability. Combined with their extroverted thinking and its focus on organizing for productivity and efficiency, they won't want to waste resources on something outlandish when small fixes will do the trick. The INTP type is more likely to want to scrap the whole thing and start fresh because their brain is taking apart and analyzing the frameworks, figuring out how they work and what the greater needs are. And then they get excited to juggle new ideas and possibilities for the one most elegant and timeless application. Until the INTP can clearly articulate their ideas and possibilities and provide the ISTJ with a practical plan, including budgets and timelines, the ISTJ will not be able to consider the best, most elegant solution because it just won't register. They don't process information that is presented as an idea. It's not that the ISTJ is against all change per se, but to speak their language, you want to present your new project showing how you would save money and time over time, how you would teach the new software to the existing clients, how other companies may have done it before and with what success, maybe even how you would support those existing clients during the transition phase with minimal losses, because again, stability is a big motivation for ISTJ types. Any disruption of the status quo needs a very good explanation and a step-by-step -step procedure with contingencies for eventualities. To convince an ISTJ type of your new idea, show them that you've thought everything through. If it's the other way around, if you have to convince the INTP type to stick with what you have because scrapping and starting fresh simply isn't an option, prove to them why sticking with the status quo is the best solution for everyone involved. They probably won't be swayed by Excel spreadsheets or pie charts, so you might have to critique and poke holes in their ideas, but make sure to question their hypotheses without calling into question their expertise and basically hope that they won't quit because every team needs a good INTP. And I think we'll leave it there. Let me know if you found this helpful and which types you'd like me to dive into next. Until then, check out my personality type playlist where you'll learn about analytic and holistic flavors of each of the eight cognitive processes. We'll see you there.